Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I know, I shouldn't move. I know. <laughs> I thought they'd be bigger. Oh, wait, it's the screen. Never mind. Okay. We have one minute! You want to stand out? You know it's karaoke. You didn't know you came to karaoke. No, it's. No, it's scary okay. <laughs> All right, um, I think we're gonna start because uh, we got a lot of talking to do, and uh, we got a lot of prizes to give away. So, um, uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Emery and Rich. I'm the uh, author of these books. And I'm also the horror hostess for HorrorAddicts.net. It's a podcast. We're in our 10th season. Wow. Amazing. And um, I'm going to let each one of the panelists introduce themselves going down the row. So should we start with Laurel or Lauren? Laurel, you won. Okay. <laughs> All right, Laurel Ann Hill, author and former underground storage tank operator. And this is Owl. <laughs> you notice I'm wearing the thick glove because owls have very sharp talons. <laughs> I don't want to bruise myself. And I write science fiction fantasy steampunk and horror. And I've written, um, I know I have over 25 short stories published, and I've lost track. And I've had some nonfiction stories published as well, and I have one published novel. So I do mostly, I mostly have my uh, stories and anthologies, and I keep telling myself that one of these days I've got to put everything that I've written, or at least the ones that I want to admit that I've written <laughs> in a book, so maybe I'll do that. Um, my name is Miko Salsin. Um, I actually just put this together. I'm pretty proud of this. This is called 60 Black Women in Horror Writing. It's really small, but um, it's a list of black women who write horror. I guess you probably figured that out. Um, because when I first started writing horror and I started going into bookstores trying to get to my work, they kind of started looking at me like I'd lost my mind. Wow. <laughs> and a few of them talked about Octavia Butler, who was a sci-fi writer, who was the only black woman they ever heard of writing speculative fiction. Anyway, I've written um, something like eight books. Uh, really a lot of books. This is the first book in a trilogy. It's a dark fantasy. It has, um, I don't know, romance and a lot of bondage. This is the short story. <laughs> nice description there. <laughs> this is short stories, things that go bump in my head. This is actually for kids, so it doesn't have the bondage. It's <laughs> had. <laughs> so um, I think that um, the, the other thing is, um, you know, I'm dressed up as Harley Quinn because I was on a panel earlier that was about DC comics that are being turned into TV shows, so I figured I would come in one of their characters instead of one of my characters, so that's that. Well, hi, I'm uh, Jason Stewart. I write under the name Jason, or J.M. Stewart and J. Malcolm Stewart. I am the uh, uh, author of uh, Gosh, let's see, about eight uh, published shorts, a full length horror novel called The Eyes of the Stars, which is available at um, DoubleDragonEbooks.com. I'm also the author of the self collected story collection. This is, this is my newest edition, The Last Words of Robert Johnson and Other Stories. And the title story is about the last night of the 
famous blues musician's life and the meaning behind his mysterious last statement, which hangs on the wall of the Kansas City Blues Museum. And uh, it's my take on what happened that fateful night of August 6, 1938. There are also some other uh, very, uh, hopefully, interesting stories in the, in the tome. I uh, also am the author of a nonfiction book called uh, Look Back in Harm, uh, uh, available both in ebook and in Kindle and down in the uh, dealer's room. Uh, this is a kind of a retrospective of my life, watching horror movies, uh, looking at horror movies, horror actors, horror themes. In the book, I talk about my own particular women of wonder. Uh, I rank my 50 greatest female horror performers of all time uh, from 50 to 1 and discuss their impact on the genre, uh, everyone from Veronica Cartwright to Sherry Moon Zombie to Joe Crawford uh, to Barbara Steele, and uh, it's something that was real labor of love, uh, and again, uh, kind of my love letter to the genre, which has given me so much. And all of us are on that list, right? Yes. Yeah, where we ranked? Yeah, where we ranked. Oh! There, there is a great list of, 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 of women horror writers that And I, I am very, very uh, lucky to be surrounded. I'm the lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Heather Rulo. Um, a lot of times I go by A.G. Rulo because it looks so nice on a book cover. This is my newest book. I talked previously with you guys at Baycon about um, books that I've written. The Fracture Horizon came out as an audiobook, if you like audiobooks, and that was up for a parsec. It was a finalist. Um, and then I have short stories that have come out in fantasy. It's women's destroy fantasy. I had a short in nature and, and other anthologies. But this is the one that I talked about. Uh, I had written a short story that was an audio drama, and then it was in an anthology, and it just kept growing, and everybody loved it. So the book is finally out from Bermuda Press. It came out less than a month ago. So it really is hot off the presses. Um, Yay! And I think you guys, if you've come to panels previously, you've heard part of it. Yeah. So, and she was like, well, this isn't privileged yet, but... And now it is. That's right. Yay! <laughs> <It's over. laughs> My name's Lauren Rhodes. Um, I'm the editor of the Haunted Mansion Project Year Two, which is uh, it's just that kind of thing. Horror writers go up to a haunted mansion in Northern California. Uh, we've done it twice, and the third one's coming up in the fall. And uh, then we put together an anthology of um, stories inspired by events at the mansion. And uh, it's a rotating editorship, so I was lucky enough to edit the second one. I'm also the editor of the more, uh, more Curiosity Cures the Blues, which collects uh, my favorite pieces from the 10 years of the magazine. I published um, the last issue in 2006. But uh, Morbid Curiosity was true first person stories about. More morbid things have happened to people, and uh, among the contributors to the magazine were Brian Keane and Ray Garden and a whole bunch of horror writers that I have the honor to have. And this guy is my new baby, the dangerous type. He's not out yet. I'm going to give away a copy tonight, so I hope y'all put a thing in there. Um, it's a, the first book in a science fiction trilogy. Uh, space opera, and uh, it will be out in July. Awesome. So these are the authors that are in Poor Addict's Guide to Life. They are all in it. So if you choose, yay! Okay. <laughs> if you choose to purchase one of these, you can get all these signatures at once, and you don't have to go around and everything. So it's just better if you get it here, right? Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about what the Horror Addict's Guide to Life is um, and what each one of us contributed in this little baby. Um, so I did a lot of, I did this chunk back here that's the almanac. And what this cool thing is, is month by month, things that you can do in every month, not just October, to be a horror addict. And it also has a list every single day who was born or what happened that's cool that you can celebrate. 
Okay. We also have recipes in there by one of our authors um, in Arizona, Dan Charette. So lots of pumpkin recipes and uh, pumpkin brittle and pound cake and all that kind of stuff. So not his adventurous eating. Right. Ooh, it's a weird stuff. Well, yes. On the show, he does in morbid meals. He, he, our last show had the cannibal burgers. Yes. It wasn't actually cannibal burgers, but um, I don't know if you heard that the UK put on this big event where they had burgers that were supposed to taste like human flesh. How they knew it, I don't want to know. But he recreated it, and uh, it has like pork and veal and weird stuff in it, and when you bite into it, obviously, I guess it tastes like human flesh. Well, uh, that's a little bit too much for me, but <laughs> there's none of that in here. It's actually just, uh, you know, pumpkins and fun stuff. Uh, we also have uh, party games and golf fashion and music and all this kind of fun stuff. So, cannot be missed. And we're going to start with Laurel. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you contributed to the piece? Well, it's, it's fairly short. If I talk too much, I will have said everything. <laughs> <laughs> usually I have a lot more words. Yeah, your, your, your stories are usually more in there, but it was short but sweet. <laughs> um, practicing safe satisfaction. And, uh, you know, when, when we have an addiction, like a good glass of wine or chocolate, or something that we really, really like. We're we're really not too. I mean, as long as we don't overdo it and get drunk or uh, break out all over from the chocolate, we're really not too embarrassed about it. Uh, about bringing this up, or if you're in the middle of a meeting and you say, "Oh my gosh, I, I excuse me, I have to go down to the vending machine and get some chocolate." You know, everyone understands, <laughs> but if you're in a business meeting and you say, excuse me, I have to go to the refrigerator and get a glass of blood, <laughs> it wouldn't be quite the same thing. So um, I, I did a short piece on practicing safe satisfaction, how you satisfy your cravings for horror and horror-related things and not become an outcast within your workplace, within your family group, or within your ordinary, within your norms, friends. You know, what the norms, do yes. yes. The, the dreaded, dreaded norms. norms. Yes. <laughs> and so that's, that's what it does. It just gives a little bit of advice of what one can do. Awesome. Okay, Samiko, so what did you do? Well, you know, I'm a well-known cat lady. Most of my good friends are cat ladies, so cats seem like a natural subject. Maybe some of you are thinking cats have no relationship to horror, but, you know, your cats, when you die, they are going to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's always trying to trip me. <laughs> yeah, 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 and I'm like, yeah, I always said, if I die, I'm not going to be able to feed you. And I think I'm waiting for exactly. <laughs> And every horror movie has one cat scare. Exactly. And, and, you know, we used to worship them, and they haven't forgotten about that. They would like things to go back to the good old days, pretty much. So, you know, horror movies have taught us that there are certain things to look out for with your cat. And, you know, like, for example, if... Um, Someone comes to your house and they want to take you, but your cat hates their guts. They might be a sleepwalker. They might be out to, you know, kill you. So, you know, on the other hand, your cat might actually want to kill you. So, you know, we got to look out for these things when we have cats. So, so I wrote the moral guide to cats. Very entertaining, yeah. A lot of our articles in this book are tongue-in-cheek. I mean, they're like not taking themselves too seriously. <laughs> okay, Jay, you're next. <laughs> well, the, the cats probably took it very seriously. I mean, they're really kind of they probably would enjoy it. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, given kind of my uh, uh, interest in horror movies, I wrote the 24-hour uh, uh, Halloween movie marathon article that appears in the book. And I take you through, uh, I think the total ended up being uh, 20, Seven horror movies, starting at 12:01 on the uh, 31st, all the way until uh, November 1st. And I plan her down for you. 
which movies you should watch, how long it's going to take you to watch the movies. I do leave you time to grab something to eat and hit the bathroom. <laughs> and just take you through the whole day of horror movies that you should watch one after another to uh, prove yourself a true and die-hard uh, lover of horror. Uh, it, uh, classics, new movies, uh, slasher films, uh, uh, more uh, foreign language horror, uh, even an anime horror movie. Uh, I kind of go across the spectrum and kind of plan your day. So instead of going out trick-or-treating, tell everyone to come over to your house, tell them to get there by 12 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> prepare up the TV, and watch horror movies all day. Awesome. I'm not sure I had friends who did that good. I was like, I want to see you for 24 hours. <laughs> well, you don't, have to, you don't have to look at them. Just say, like, yeah, I'm watching the movie. <laughs> Um, my piece in the book is also short. It's just an anecdote. Uh, it's entitled "Dead Pets." Sorry. <laughs> but uh, it kind of gives you party advice as well as writing advice, and it's all kind of revolving around dead pets. So I hope that intrigues you. And what's the question that you asked? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> okay. Dead pets I'm Um, we have Lillian joining us. She Hi just there. ran over from Clockwork. <laughs> Hello. She looks really excited to be here. Are you all look at the name straight later? <laughs> <laughs> She's our new blog editor um, for HorrorAddicts.net. So happy to have her. I'm in charge of spelling it right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and okay, so Lauren. Uh, my piece is, is a story from the Haunted Mansion, so it's a ghost story. Uh, I don't know, I, I can hey. tell it, but it, it's, it's short. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, not, I mean, true, true, true ghost story. story. True yeah. ghost story. Yeah. True ghost story. Um, the thing about this mansion is, I believe in ghosts, so I, I was more worried that we would spend all this money to go stay in a haunted mansion we wouldn't see anything. Um, I was lucky the ghost didn't mess with me too much, but some of the people who went in there saying, you know, I don't really believe in ghosts, but I'm here to see if something will come and got thrown out of bed or got their covers torn off in the middle of the night. It's really spooky there. Spooky. <laughs> Where is this? Awesome. It's in Northern California. Oh, we can't tell. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God, this goes the, the people that own the house, it's a a bed and breakfast, and they don't want it to be known as a haunted house, so. What are the yes. toys around here it says, where are they? <laughs> <laughs> and the ghost there gets very, very angry with people that joke about it. Yeah, we need a story about that. Yeah. You're on it. <laughs> <laughs> Your first assignment. <laughs> once he made all my marbles fall across the cash registers, once he made a sign fly off the Salvation Army Oh, ow. <laughs> so that's not good. He's not a friendly ghost. <laughs> So, okay, so you've heard a little bit about the Horror Addicts Guide to Life, and now since we've all kind of told what we do, I want to talk about Lillian all the way at the end. Lillian, can you introduce yourself and talk about what you write and that kind of thing? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for coming at this hour. It's nice to see so many of you. <laughs> I write fantasy, horror, romance, and all kinds of stuff. Um, the thing that may interest you the most, since you're horror writers, is the fact that I write The Fright Factory, which is a how-to guide on building better horror. This is an e-book. If you Google me, I am the only person on the planet with my name. <laughs> because everybody else in the country is my family, my marriage. I married into it, I took this on, I, my mother-in-law warned me, you will spell your name every day for the rest of your life. <laughs> and she was not kidding. Um, I also am in These Vampires Don't Sparkle. Oh, yes. Which is a fun book. This is a historical uh, fantasy story with the only vampire story I have ever written. <laughs> if you know me, you know I have, I have issues with vampires, but that's okay. It's set in 14th century France. And the vampire is a Russian noblewoman. So, wow. I volunteered to be the blog editor for Horror Addicts because 
pardon me for putting away my shameless self promotion because in recent times, most of my writing time has been devoted to historical romance because that's where I make money. And I was feeling that the down and dirty, horror movie loving, screen queen adoring fan girl in me was being neglected. <laughs> so here I am, proudly proclaiming, throwing the skeleton out of the closet that I am a horror addict. <laughs> Fiction and you know, um, 